leaders of Oklahoma Living selected Guthrie most beautiful town in Oklahoma. For nearly 65 years, Oklahoma Living has served Oklahoma's rural electric cooperative members by supplying information about their local electric co-ops, affordable electricity, and Oklahoma rural lifestyle. Through the years, the publication has expanded to full color, 10 by 12, 36 page on average magazine. Their readership has grown to over 650,000, making them the largest publication in Oklahoma. This is quite an honor if you think of all the communities and things in Oklahoma for us to be picked by that size of readership as the most beautiful town in Oklahoma. Next item I want to touch on is our January sales tax report. Through the first four months of FY 2018 budget, our budget starts on October 1, the city sales tax revenue is 14% ahead of the same four months of last budget year. That is $277,000 increase in sales tax revenue for the first four months. $222,000 of that, and I'm rounding these numbers off, goes to the general fund and $55,000 goes to the capital improvement fund. I would point out before we get too excited, uh, we need to sustain this sales tax revenue increase over an extended period of time before we start budgeting higher sales tax revenue for our next budget but it is a good indicator. Next thing I wanted to touch on, we have developed a master trail concept plan to try to tie in with a network or backbone, all of our major parks eventually with a trail system, a combination of shared roads and existing roads and then new trails, and then also tie in downtown and our major retail area on Division Street, Walmart, and that area. This can be expanded, but this is our initial master plan. This is a substantial undertaking that will take several years to complete, but the effort will be a combination of the various streets and trails. This is just a prototype of what we'll look at doing. The new trails that we build will be 12 foot wide to accommodate multi-use where you can have walkers on one side, people rollerblading and bicycles on the other side of the trail. Later this month, the city will be applying for a Oklahoma Tourism Recreation Department Trails Program Grant. The grant application will be for $240,000 with um, $60,000 in match for a total project of $300,000. If funded, this first trail project will tie in from 2nd Street downtown via 5th and Warner to the new Banner Park and the future pedestrian bridge at 9th Street that in a later phase will take us to development of a trail system in what's commonly referred to as the elbow area. We'll pick that up area in our second grant application. This one's funded. And then I'd also like to point out to tie into this our next uh, Safe Routes to School that is a 100% funded grant that we apply for. We plan to apply for a sidewalk from Cotterill School down to the new bridge. We'll have a sidewalk on it to tie them into a sidewalk system that they could walk to downtown or they could walk down and cross over and go to the field trips at the new Banner Park and the skate park. The next slide is the Banner Park concept plan. Just a report on that. The Banner Park will have walking trails, playground areas that are handicapped accessible, the city's first splash pad, and a series of picnic shelters for family outings to the park. We plan to put the Banner Park project out for bids in February. That's just an example of the type of picnic shelters we plan to build in Banner Park. We got some larger shelters and other parks for family reunions and bigger events. These are more small shelters geared towards one or two families getting together with their children in the park to either walk or play or use the splash pad. Part of the project, as much as we can, we're going to do in-house. And we are doing the site work or dirt work for the park ourselves in-house, leveling it out, and then the picnic shelters is something else that we will do. We'll buy the materials and build it in-house with the exception of the rock work. We don't have a rock work. Certified Healthy Community. Uh, in 2010, Governor Fallon signed into law the Oklahoma Certified Healthy Communities Act, which establishes a voluntary 
certification program for communities that promote wellness, encourage the adoption of healthy behaviors, and establish safe and supportive environments. This annual certification process recognizes Oklahoma communities for their outstanding efforts and achievements in actively creating communities that are a healthy place to live, work, learn, and play. The program is administered by the Oklahoma Turning Point Council and the Oklahoma State Department of Health Center for the Advancement of Wellness. The City of Guthrie has again met the criteria to be recognized as a certified healthy community. There are three levels of certification, basic, merit, and excellence. Guthrie earned the excellence certification. The last item is more on a serious note. The City of Guthrie has 395,000 linear feet or approximately 74 miles of water distribution lines. It's my understanding that some of these lines are over 100 years old. The photos you are seeing on the screen is a sample of the mineral residue that has built up in these lines over the years. I don't want to alarm anyone, this is not contaminated, but simply minerals that have settled lines over the years. The city has designated sampling sites throughout our water distribution system, and each month we send those samples into a lab, and the findings have continued to show that the water delivered through our water distribution lines meets DEQ's water quality standards. However, when we experience line breaks, flush lines or do fire hydrant flow tests, these activities stir up the residue in the water lines, the, these minerals that can cause discoloration and impact taste and smell of the water, even though it's safe to drink. We still have to continue to be prepared on the water treatment side to deal with the turnover issues that the likes, and I think we've done some things to make strides there but we also need to develop a systematic replacement program to place our old water lines if we want to address our entire water issue. We are in the process of identifying priority areas to break the water line replacement project into phases, but even by doing the project in systematic phases, it will be a very costly project to replace 74 miles of line. That's my report.